What's poppin', my gang? In this video, we will cover how to find, compile, flash, and test DMA firmware. This video is based on GitHub open source firmware. If you follow along this video, there is a slight chance you may find the custom firmware you have paid for or have been wanting to pay for on GitHub already. The purpose of this video is to bypass the paywall that many firmware sellers put up when it comes to custom firmware. To be clear, this is not a custom firmware creation video. We are only covering how to compile and flash already made sources. First, you will need to go to amd.com and register an account. An account is required to download Vivado. This software is what we will be using to compile the firmware. It is recommended to use real information when you register an account here. Now, at the top left, click Products, then Software, Tools, and Apps, then Vivado Software. Click Download Now. Scroll down to find the AMD installer for Windows and click the hyperlink. Scroll down to the bottom and click the download button. Once the installer is downloaded, run it. Check the box and click allow access on the firewall pop-up. Once the installer opens, enter your amd.com login information and click next. Click the Vado, then click next. Click Vivado ML Standard, then click Next. For the next page, it is highly recommended to match your tree selection to the video. Otherwise, the installation will take a very long time and your computer will be begging for mercy by the time it is over. Check both boxes to agree, then click Next. Use the C slash Xilinx path for installation. Click Install to start the installation. This installation may take some time. When it is complete, you can open Vivado. Here we are on the groundbreaking website known as GitHub. To find open source firmwares, you will need to search PCI Leech into the search bar. Generally, it is best to sort these by recently added. However, it really does not matter. As you can see, not every search result or firmware files. You will have tools and methods as well. These results go on for a while with a lot of the same firmware sources that are sold by Discord sellers and websites. Identify which source you want to use for no reason in particular, we are going to use this Elgato-based firmware source for the video. Click code at the top right and download zip. Locate your source download archive and extract it to your desktop. If your source did not include .bat files like this one does, skip to the Method 2 section of the video. Otherwise, continue. Identify the generation file for your DMA card and run it. Click Allow on any messages that show up in Windows. Once the source opens in Vivado, click the Generate Bitstream button. Click Yes, then click OK. Now wait for your firmware to compile. It may take some time. Once complete, you can close Vivado. You can locate your compile.bin firmware file by following the directory like in the video. For the manual generation, I have extracted my source files to an external hard drive. Regardless of where you place the files, the instructions will be the same. Click the directory path at the top of Explorer and right-click to copy the path for the root folder of your source. 
in Vivado at the top search bar, type TCL console, uh, select the corresponding option in the drop down. In the console, type CD. Then right click and paste your directory path you copied earlier. Next, change the backslashes to forward slashes. Press Enter to send the command. Type PWD to verify the file path. Use the information on the screen to identify which project generation TCL file you will need to use. What's identified? Copy the full file name of that file to your clipboard. In the console, type source, then right click and paste the file name from before. Press Enter after. Once the project opens, go back to your source files and copy the full file name of the Vivado build TCL to your clipboard. In the console, type source, then right click to paste. Press Enter after. The firmware is now being compiled. Depending on your computer specs, this could take 10 to 20 minutes to complete. Once complete, you can click Cancel on the pop-up window. Go back to your source files in Explorer and follow the path in the video to locate your firmware.bin file. Now we are on our main PC with the DMA card installed. For this Elgato-based firmware, we are going to download and install the 4K Capture Utility from the Elgato website. At the moment, I am on PCI Leech-based firmware to make this video somewhat realistic. Now we're going to head over to our second PC to flash the firmware. From the second PC, verify in Device Manager that you are connected to your JTAG port on your DMA card. Please note that the DMA card being used for this demonstration has a CH347-based JTAG. If you are not using a similar device, please reach out to your hardware provider for help on how to flash your DMA card. If your provider is not so helpful, we can also assist via Discord. Next, we are going to ensure our JTAG driver is installed by reinstalling it again. Moving on to the Firmware Flash Tool folder. As you can see here, I have renamed my Elgato firmware file so I can organize it easier. If you want to do this yourself, ensure that there are no spaces anywhere in the full file name. Since we are flashing a 35T card, I am going to select 35T for the FPGA section. Select bin for the middle drop-down. Click the top left button to select your firmware file. Click the middle left button to begin the flash. Once complete, the flash tool will show a message like so. At this point, you can power off your main PC, wait 10 seconds, then power it on. Afterwards, move the USB cable to the data port on your DMA card. Once the main PC turns back on, open Lone DMA Test Tool and run a full test. Additionally, you can use the extended test tool to test if memory writing is functional. This is more useful when your main PC is not at your desktop. Lastly, we are going to verify the driver has loaded normally on the main PC. The Elgato is located in the Sound, Video, and Game Controllers section of Device Manager. If you are using a different firmware and were not provided a driver, you can look up the vendor and device ID to help identify the device better. Then from there, you must use your GigaChat Gooner brain 
to locate the driver file. With the Elgato-based firmware, your device will also show in the 4K capture utility in the settings. This concludes the guide for compiling, flashing, and testing open-source firmwares. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us via email or Discord.